The Carolina Panthers continue to build a dynamite staff under Frank Reich, but should there be concern about potential staff retention if the Carolina Panthers are to have success in 2023? I'll tell you why not right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Make sure to watch our show and subscribe to our show over on our Locked On Panthers YouTube channel. You can also check out the podcast free and available everywhere where you get your podcasts. Just be sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss a single edition of the show. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where I'm back again on Friday, answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions right here on the show. Either at me or DM me if you'd like to participate in this week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag on Locked On Panthers. Today's episode of Locked On Panthers is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. If you ever dreamed of becoming an NFL general manager and managing your own football franchise, well, then this is the game definitely for you to download the game just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores my listeners get a 100 free boost to their franchise when using promo code locked on that's in all caps when using the game all right the carolina panthers continue to build out what looks like to be one of the best staffs in the nfl now only time will tell and of course getting the quarterback right was the most important thing the carolina panthers must do this offseason but so far hiring frank reich Hiring a Jero Averro and hiring a bunch of these other staffers have really gotten me excited and a lot of you excited about the potential of, for the Carolina Panthers in 2023 and beyond. It feels like David Tepper, the Panthers owner here, is finally, finally starting to get things right and turning into the kind of owner that we hoped that he would be. But only time will tell. The Carolina Panthers went out there and made another big time hire on Friday afternoon as it was announced that Thomas Brown. The former Georgia running back had a brief stint in the NFL as a running back as well, but spent the last three seasons under Sean McVay with the Rams, is now the new Panthers offensive coordinator. Throughout last week, I was wondering where the Panthers' OC search was going to go. It seemed like they were waiting for the Eagles and what was going to happen with Shane Steichen, who eventually got the Indianapolis Colts job, then get Jonathan Gannon left to go to Arizona. And there was questions about the two Eagles assistants who have been linked to this job, Brian Johnson who had Steve Wilson taken a job here in Carolina or gotten a job here in Carolina, was his target for OC. I have not seen anything so far as of this point in time that leads Brian Johnson to be the new OC in Philadelphia re- replacing Steichen. Of course, they have to go through the entire process and Rooney rule and all of that. But he's the favorite to get that job. And then Kevin Petulo, former wide receivers coach, who's the passing game coordinator, but wide receivers coach in Indianapolis under Frank Reich, was also another name. But again, have not heard anything about him and his chances of being here in Carolina, as neither one of those guys even interviewed for the job. But the man who was linked with the job on Thursday to interview, Thomas Brown, on Friday, is now the Carolina Panthers' new offensive coordinator again. Spent the last three years with the Rams under Sean McVay, three years as oh, three years there. Two years as a running back coach, and last season was a tight end coach and the assistant head coach. He has nine years of previous coaching experience outside of the NFL, having been at South Carolina for a season, at Miami, Georgia's alma mater, Wisconsin, Marshall, Chattanooga. You look at college experience, all those are big-time programs with South Carolina being in the SEC and having success in the past. Miami, which is still trying to get back to where they used to be, but Georgia, back-to-back national champions, Wisconsin, a great program in their own right, and even the lower levels, Marshall, Proud tradition there in West Virginia and up in Huntingdon. Really good programs that he worked at to gain his experience, then to go to the NFL and to be working on Sean McVay's staff, one of the young, innovative head coaches who I think is going in like year seven with the Rams, which is crazy to think about it, how he's still maybe the youngest head coach in the National Football League at this point in time, and he's already won a Super Bowl. He's been to another one. He's been really successful. And for Brown to be working with him for the last couple of years after all that college experience has to have Panther fans encouraged about what he could potentially do here in Carolina. Now, I don't know whether he's going to call the plays or not. That is a key question that we'll learn eventually 
The Panthers will introduce all these staffers. I imagine they're going to probably do that sometime this week with uh, Jero Averro going and then Thomas Brown. And maybe we'll get to talk to some of these other guys who are going to be lower staff positions on defense and on offense and special teams and hear what they have to say and why they came to Carolina. But Thomas Brown, solid hire. I talked to Jordan Rodriguez, who used to cover the Carolina Panthers here for the Observer, then with the Athletics. She's actually going to join the show tomorrow as the Panthers don't just have one former Rams staffer but three with Jonathan Cooley, the new cornerbacks coach here in Carolina, and also Jero Vero, who is now the new defensive coordinator. So I want to talk to her about these three, these three young, these three men, and what they're bringing to Carolina, especially Thomas Brown and Jero Vero, just to see what they can provide to Carolina and how good this staff really is. But I text her and asked her like, "Hey, I haven't thought about Thomas Brown honestly, y'all. I haven't thought about this man since he was playing running back at Georgia." I had no idea that he had been on all these staffs. I think I knew he was at Georgia at some point in time, maybe at South Carolina, but I hadn't really paid attention to what his career has gone as a coach and him being in L.A. with the Rams. And, hey, I saw his name on the list. I was like, oh, hey, I remember Thomas Brown. It's been a minute since the last time I ever thought about Thomas Brown, but here he is in Carolina. So I asked her, give me the rundown on who this guy is. She says that Thomas is a pretty fantastic coach and leader, super bright, an egoist thinker, wants to find the best way, not mandate his way, strong personalities. Players really gravitate toward him because he's authentic and doesn't BS. He doesn't rattle, and I think that will make him a great play caller if he gets some of the opportunities. And he also has a great family. Jordan also tweeted out on thir- on a Friday afternoon after the announcement was out there that Thomas Brown would be heading to Carolina as the OC that Sean McVay did not want to lose him. Um, that he regards him as one of the best teachers he's worked with and a rising offensive mind, which, hey, let's go. Love that. But he couldn't uh, block Brown from a great opportunity like this either because OC in Carolina is a promotion from the tight end coach and assistant head coach position that he held with Los Angeles and the Rams. Frank Reich so far has built a strong, diverse offensive staff. Frank Reich, as we know, played in the NFL at quarterback, had one of the greatest comebacks in NFL history, was an OC for the Philadelphia Eagles when they won the Super Bowl with Nick Foles battling Tom Brady out in the desert. Then takes a head coaching job in Indianapolis, according to Stephen Holder of ESPN.com. The best football he ever saw Andrew Luck play in Indy was that one year with Frank Reich. Also said that Jacoby Brissett looked really good. And the final year of Phillip Rivers with uh, Frank Reich was also pretty good football out of old Phil Rivers. So Frank Reich can coach quarterbacks, and he has – had success as an OC and as a head coach, even if he was fired in Indianapolis, still left there with a winning record. And had he had quarterback stability and had the run game and offensive line not kind of falling apart this past year, we might not even be having this conversation about his staff and him here in Carolina. You also have now Thomas Brown, who played briefly in the NFL, played in college at Georgia, has been around for 12 years as a coach on both the college and NFL level, especially at a high level in the NFL with Sean McVay out there in Los Angeles, who now comes here as a guy who's worked with players, who's been a player, and gets an opportunity to lead an offense. We'll see if, whether he calls it plays or not. Josh McCown, who's only about two, three years removed from being an NFL player who spent 17 years in the league. Like, damn, y'all. Now he's going to come here as a quarterback coach. Don't know how good of a quarterback coach he's going to be, but as far as mentorship and the role he's going to play, especially with his staff around him, I'm excited to see what he can do. Parks Frazier, filled in as the play caller for interim head coach Jeff Saturday in Indianapolis after Frank Reich was fired. He's only 31 years old, but he's someone you could think about could potentially be the OC down the line here in Carolina. Deuce Staley, who's had experience in the league there in Philadelphia with Frank Reich when they won the Super Bowl, a long time with the Eagles, coming from Detroit back home in the Carolinas. Excited about him, James Campen, one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL. He's back along with his assistant offensive line coach, Robert Kugler. Um, by the way, Jim Caldwell, who's coached the team to a Super Bowl with Peyton Manning, who spent a lot of time working with offenses, working with quarterbacks. He's on this staff as a senior assistant, not necessarily offensive assistant, but still, man, He's going to be around this offense and working with this coaching staff. And I think he's going to pee in Frank Reich's ear as his right hand man, letting him know like, hey, these are things that we need to do. This is the best way to kind of achieve these goals that we have within this organization. And then Sean Johnson, now the wide receivers coach, one other position missing tight end coach here in Carolina. And that one, as we know, will be critical as the Carolina Panthers need to go out there and find some tight ends and actually utilize position, something that was missing in the offense the last three years when Matt Rule was here and then when Steve Wilkes took over as interim coach for the final 12 games during the 2022 season. So I'm very excited 
about this coaching staff here in Carolina. And another note here, saw this from Jonathan Jones, CBS Sports. The Carolina Panthers currently are the only team in the NFL with two black men as their offensive and defensive coordinators in Thomas Brown and in Jero Averro as their defensive coordinator. So kudos to this staff and really to the ownership because there's questions about, well, what does a black man have to do to get a head coaching job? And certainly Steve Wilkes deserved this job. But you have to give a lot of credit to Frank Reich and also to David Tepper for the staff that they're building here in Carolina and that it's not just the typical staff that we've seen where it's a bunch of your buddies. And Frank Reich said, it's not just going to be a bunch of my buddies. It's going to be people that are going to have an influence here in the staff. It's going to be a diverse staff. It's going to be all about compatibility and about working together. And he has built that with former quarterbacks, former wide receivers, former running backs, former offensive linemen, all on this offensive staff. And even defensively, it looks the same way. And we'll go over the defensive staff a little bit later on the show. So a strong, diverse offensive staff and just staff in totality built here under Frank Reich. Now with that, is the Panthers staff too strong? I'll explain to you what I mean in just a moment here on Locked On Panthers. But before I do that, this episode of Locked On Panthers is brought to you by the mobile game app Ultimate Football GM. You've heard me talk about this mobile game app, and I cannot tell you how much fun I had competing against my fellow Locked On NFL hosts this past year. And well, now it's your turn to compete, but more on that later. Have you ever in your life dreamed of becoming an NFL general manager and managing your own football franchise? Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. You'll manage every strategic aspect of your team, playing through seasons, and lead your team to glory by trying to build a dynasty. With Ultimate Football GM, you're responsible for controlling the destiny of your franchise by hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft, and all the ups and downs of the season. All of this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want to. And now at Locked On, we've created a Locked On League for you to compete against Locked On fans all over the world so that you can create your own dynasty. Locked On Panthers listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code Locked On in all caps in the game store. That's Locked On in all caps, so make sure to check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. Is the Carolina Panthers coaching staff too strong. I know it sounds ridiculous. We're sitting here. I am praising Frank Reich for bringing in Thomas Brown, for bringing in Josh McCallion, getting young Parks Frazier here, Deuce Staley, James Camp, and then looking on the other side of the ball with uh, Jero Averro now here in Carolina. And I'm sitting here being like, man, that's a great staff, but is it too good of a staff? Like, should there be concern about Panther staff being too good? And I say that because look around the league. When a team has success, and the Carolina Panthers have not even gotten to that point yet. They got to get the quarterback, then they got to go out there, win some games before it really becomes a conversation of, oh, damn, are we going to lose this guy? But when you see staffs have success, like the Eagles, go to the Super Bowl in second year of Nick Sirianni as the head coach. He's now lost both his coordinators in um, Shane Steichen, who's now in Indianapolis. You got Jonathan Gannon, who's now down in Tex in with the Texans. And he's also lost a couple of other staffers as the linebacker coach there in Philadelphia is now the D.C. out in Arizona under Jonathan Gannon. Like, that's the product of having success is that you're going to lose some of your key staffers. So you look at it. The Panthers have success. They're going to eventually lose these guys. And you wonder... Will they even be able to retain him after a single year when you look at some of the guys that they have hired here in Carolina this cycle? Now, I say that because I look at Ajero Averro, I look at Thomas Brown, I look at Josh McCown. All three of these coaches have had interviews in the past for head coaching jobs in the NFL. Now, Josh McCown, back-to-back -back years, talked to the Texans back in 2021 and 2022 before getting passed over by David Cully and by Lovey Smith. And passed over is a generous phrase because really the Texans probably wanted to hire him. But considering the climate of the lack of opportunities for proven or for deserving black coaches in the NFL at a head coach opportunity, it did not make a lot of sense for the Texans to go that route. And also the lawsuit out there with Brian Flores in the National Football League, especially last season, didn't make much sense for them. And the league certainly did not need that headache for them taking Josh McCown. But still, Josh McCown has spent a lot of years in the, in the NFL as a player. He's going to work with a quarterback here who could be a rookie, maybe probably like C.J. Stroud, who knows who's going to be. If that rookie has success, people are going to look at the leadership that he had as a quarterback in the league, as a veteran in the league, and also now as a coach and think, that's the guy that we want to lead our team. 
And you might look at it and be like, okay, well, he hasn't called plays. He has he's only has one year of NFL experience. That hasn't stopped. That that will I don't think that will stop anybody from taking Josh McCown. They think he's the right leader. And we get too caught up a lot of times in play calling, and especially with Eric Bieniemy, who's now taking the AOC job out there in Washington, where he's going to call the plays under Ron Rivera, which he wasn't doing in Kansas City. I think we get way too caught up in who calls the plays, whether you're an offensive coach or a defensive coach, who can lead. And if a team thinks that Josh McCown can lead, which the Houston Texans certainly thought that was the case, then he'll get an opportunity in the NFL as a head coach sooner rather than later. So there's the possibility that he could lead, but I don't know if that's going to happen after one year. But Ajero Averro, as I told y'all, I think a couple weeks ago when he was introduced here at Carolina, be prepared to lose this man after one single season with the Panthers. He interviewed with all five head coaching openings this year in the NFL coaching cycle. The Panthers, the Broncos, the Cardinals, the Texas, the Colts. Talk to every single one of those organizations. He will once again, after this year, where I imagine this is going to be a top 10, top five defense, he will once again be talking to whatever openings are out there in the NFL. I hope he's a little bit more choosy because I look at some of the opportunities that he talked to, like, the Cardinals, the Texans, the Colts, I'm good there, man. Broncos, he was already there in Denver. Panthers, I get it. But some of the other opportunities weren't great. So actually, it's probably best that he is here in Carolina this year. But expect him to go out there and explore head coaching opportunities again next season and then potentially get one. We look at the offensive and defensive coaches and who got jobs this year. You got Sean Payton in Denver. You got Shane Steichen in Indianapolis. You got D'Amico Ryans in Houston, who's a defensive coach. You also have out in Arizona, Jonathan Gann, who's a defensive coach. And then you have um, Frank Reich here in Carolina. So three offensive, two defensive. So it's certainly possible that Ajero Averro could get a job next year as a head coach. Thomas Brown also interviewed with the Texans this cycle. That was the only head coach interview we had uh, during the entire cycle. I know he interviewed in, in uh, Tampa Bay for their offensive coordinator job. Of course, interviewed here in Carolina is now the OC. So he's someone who potentially could leave. But I don't really get all that concerned that he would. If anyone, I think Ajero Averro is probably going to be gone after one year here in Carolina. But I think that Thomas Brown is going to be here for a couple years. Josh McCown, I don't see him bolting after a single season either. Averro is the one that, I think probably would deserve to get a head coaching job, and I would not be surprised if he left that third season to get a head coaching job. And that only is a compliment to what the staff we have here now in Carolina is and how strong they are and what Frank Reich has been able to do to get potential future head coaches in Averro, in Brown, in McCown, and maybe even some other guys lower down the rung here in Carolina. And continuity is so important. Look at the Bengals. Somehow, Two straight years after going to the Super Bowl last year and again to the AFC title game again this year. Somehow, Lou Anarumo, their defensive coordinator, and Brian Callahan, their OC, have not gotten head coaching jobs in the NFL. Both of those guys were finalists in, in like I think, in Arizona and I want to say Indianapolis, respectively, and did not get those jobs. So, hey congratulations to the Bengals fans and that organization that they keep, they get to keep two strong coordinators on the roster and continuity is so key in chemistry, which is what Frank Reich is talking about when building a staff. They're probably the same thing in this instant, but they're also just so important that you have the continuity, that you have the chemistry within your staff, that you're not always having to go out there and find new coaches year after year after year. Now, with the Rooney rule and having to talk to more candidates and not just promoting from within without even talking to anyone else, it does allow coaches like a Frank Reich to go out there and try to talk to other people and see if there's anyone else who might fit their staff better than see even the previous staff that they had. But it's also going to be so key that the Carolina Panthers, starting now, start developing their next OC and their next defensive coordinator. Because when you look at the staff that Frank Reich had in Indianapolis, we talked to Stephen Holder of ESPN.com, I think, last week about this, how... Reich had a really solid staff. He had like Sirianni on his staff. He had Petula. He had some really good staffers there. But once Sirianni got the job in Indianapolis, they left. He wasn't going to block them from having other opportunities to, you know, grow their career. He was going to allow them to go other places where they could have a bigger role, where they could potentially call plays. And I imagine that Frank Reich will do that again this year. But now he has, I think, a little bit more experience, guys. You don't have a ton of young men on this staff who are going to buy, try to be an OC elder like Thomas Brown. He's a younger guy, but he's already has an, an OC job. McCown, I don't know. Maybe he would leave for an offensive coordinator job. I don't 
he hasn't had any experience calling plays, but he, of course, being a quarterback, I'm sure he'd be totally fine with it. Um, but Deuce Staley, I don't see Deuce Staley like, bouncing. I don't see Kane, James Campen leaving. Maybe Kugler, who's the assistant offensive line coach, but Jim Caldwell is not going anywhere. Sean jo- Jefferson, I don't see him going anywhere. Like, I don't look at the staff where there's a bunch of like 30 somethings, like they're like, young 30s, that are like, oh, hey, man, let me go find another job elsewhere and elevate myself. I actually see some a little bit older coaches, but there are some younger ones like Parks Frazier who you can groom to be your next OC. And I look at Parks Frazier as absolutely the guy who, if you lose Thomas Brown after a year or two, that's the guy that you want to be your next OC. And who knows, maybe after a year, someone comes to Parks Frazier and is like, hey, man, I want you to be as my OC. Maybe he leaves, maybe he stays because he has such a close relationship with uh, Frank Reich. And of course, his wife is from the Carolinas. And might that be a draw to stay here? Because, hey, happy wife, happy life, as y'all know. So we'll see how it works out. But I think it's important now to go out there and to start grooming the next OC, but really the next DC. And on the defensive side of the football, I don't really know who that would be. Um, but it's going to be important that Ajiro Vero, who probably also takes Dom Capers with him, he gets a head coaching job. It's important that the Carolina Panthers can identify maybe candidates out there, the rest of the NFL, but especially internally, that eventually could be elevated to that role as of DC and as OC as Carolina Panthers have built a tremendous staff, but a staff, I believe, if they have success this year and, of course, again, the next season, a lot of teams in the NFL, a lot of owners are going to be wanting to siphon off of the staff and see if they can get some of those guys to come to their organizations and help elevate them instead. So the Panthers are going to have to combat that in the future, but that's also the hope that that's the case because the staff looks really good. But be ready, potentially lose some guys down the road. So go out there, develop them now so that you don't have any sort of drop off like we saw in Indianapolis when Frank Reich was the Colts coach there not too long ago. All right, uh, let's continue to look at the rest of this Panthers staff as it continues to grow. And there's a lot of experience in the NFL as former players have been here, guys who've been longtime coaches and even plenty of college experience, but not overwhelming like we have here with Matt Rule. So we'll talk about the rest of the Panthers staff hires in just a moment here on Locked On Panthers. Thomas Brown wasn't the only coaching hire this weekend for the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers also added four more coaches to their staff over the weekend, starting off with new outside linebacker coach Tim LaCabu, who spent the last three years as the defensive coordinator for the Boston College Eagles under Jeff Halfley, the head coach there in Chestnut Hill. He only has one year, though, of NFL experience back in 2019, coaching with the Cincinnati Bengals, but plenty of college experience, but also maybe somebody who down the road could be a D.C. here in the NFL, as again, he has three years, past three years as a defensive coordinator in college with Boston College there in the ACC. Devin Fitzsimmons was hired as the assistant special teams coach, and by the way, I was actually pretty excited when I saw this because I thought, hold on, Devin Fitzsimmons, how do I know that name? Oh, yeah, my buddy Ian Fitzsimmons, who hosts Freddie and Fitzsimmons on ESPN Radio. I used to work with him back in the day when I was working at ESPN Radio. That's his brother. So I texted Ian. I was like, hey, man, see your bro is coming down here to Charlotte. Hope to see you uh, down the road. And he's like, hell, yeah, we're fired up about it. So Devin Fitzsimmons, who spent time in Detroit, he's now the assistant special teams coach under Chris Tabor here in Carolina. He uh, spent the last two years as an assistant in Arizona under former Panthers special teams co- uh, coach Jeff Rogers. He also had a five-year stint with the Lions and a year with the Colts in 2011 as an offensive quality control coach where – He worked alongside Frank Reich and Jim Caldwell, so there is that connection as Devin Fitzsimmons is now here as the assistant special teams coach. Uh, There's a new wide receiver coach here in Carolina as Sean Jefferson is here. He has a combined 30 years in the NFL between playing and coaching, played 13 seasons in the National Football League, spending time with the Chargers, the Patriots, the Falcons, and the Lions. He also has spent 17 years, the last 17 years, as an NFL assistant working through stints with the Lions, Titans, Dolphins, Jets, and Cardinals, a ton of experience as a player and as a coach. And then finally, this one came out on Saturday night, and I was really surprised to see this because you think about some of the old NFC South rivalries that we've had, especially down I-85 South the Atlanta Falcons, and go back to the days of Steve Smith, and who was one of his main adversaries? D'Angelo Hall. Well, D. Hall is coming here to Carolina, according to Tom Pelissero, of the NFL Network after spending five years at the network. He's now coming to Carolina to be the assistant defensive back coach. He's a three-time Pro Bowler, a former Atlanta Falcons, spent time also with the Washington, then known as the Redskins. He's now here in Carolina, and as we know, he's going to bring instant credibility to the room as he was a pretty damn corner. Couldn't stop Steve Smith, though, but he's a pretty damn corner back in his day in Atlanta, in Washington, and playing in the NFL as an excellent player at Virginia Tech as well. So, man, that staff keeps getting better so offensively again 
Frank Reich as the head coach, OC Thomas Brown, quarterback coach, now Josh McCallum, passing game corner coordinator Parks Frazier, running back coach Deuce Staley, offensive line coach James Camp, and assistant offensive line coach Robert Kugler, senior assistant Jim Caldwell, wide receiver coach Sean Jefferson, still need a tight end coach. Um, then on defensive side of the ball, Jero Vero is the defensive coordinator, senior defensive assistant in, or I guess as consultant as well, Dom Capers, the first ever Panthers head coach. Got Jonathan Cooley coaching the cornerbacks, Burt Watts coaching the safeties, assistant defensive back coach, now D'Angelo Hall, inside linebacker coach Peter Hansen, outside linebacker coach Tim Lukabu, defensive line coach Todd Wash, which I think also might have been introduced on Friday as well, heading into the weekend. So that is your staff right now here in Carolina loads of NFL experience. I'm trying to look at it right now and try and count how many guys played in the league. Uh, Reich, Brown, McCown, Staley, Campen, mm, Jefferson. Let's see who else. Uh, I think Averro did play briefly. I don't know about Tom Capers. Uh, Cooley, I think, played in the league. Let's see. Hall obviously played in the league. Todd Washable played in the league. Like That's a lot of coaching experience that has not just been in the NFL as coaches, but also played in the NFL. And that's going to just garner instant respect among the people in this locker room, this team that are looking to finally have success here in Carolina. So I'm excited about the staff that Frank Reich has built. It's diverse. It's experience. It's really strong. And the rest of the league should be looking at Carolina as, man, that is a serious organization now. And that is a team to look out for in 2023. But here's the main point of all of this, this entire discussion that we've had today on the show. None of this matters unless the Carolina Panthers get the quarterback right. None of this matters. You have the foundation for a young quarterback to come in here to learn from Frank Reich, to learn from Jim Caldwell, to learn from Parks Frazier, to learn from Josh McCown. You have that foundation set up for them. And also, hopefully, to learn from a veteran quarterback, whether that could be Jacoby Brissett, Sam Darnold, Andy Dalton, don't care who it is. They have the opportunity to come in here to a solid foundation on the coaching staff, the offensive line, adding a couple playmakers, but they kind of have a chance to have come in with a solid foundation. It is so important that the Carolina Panthers get the right guy. Don't just get a guy like last year with Matt Corral. Get the right guy and have the opportunity sitting there at nine to do that. So fingers crossed. Pray, hope to God the Carolina Panthers get it right because they do. This staff can elevate this roster. and This team can be the best team in the NFC South for 2023 and beyond. All right, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Lockdown Panthers podcast, a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, hosted by yours, Julie, Julian Council. Again, y'all, make sure to watch the show, subscribe to the show over on our Lockdown Panthers YouTube channel. You can also check us out wherever you listen to all of your favorite podcasts, free and available everywhere. Just be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. And make sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where I'll be back again on Friday, answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me to participate. In the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding. And I'll talk to you on Tuesday as Jordan Rodriguez of The Athletic who covers the Los Angeles Rams tells us the Carolina Panthers are getting in a Jero Averro, Thomas Brown, and Jonathan Cooley as those are all three former Rams assistants. Until then, goodbye.